In part one of our lesson on double angle identities, we will derive the double angle identities for cosine, sine, and tangent. Recall that the sum identity for cosine is that cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. Now, if we consider cosine of 2a is equal to the cosine of a plus a, and we apply the double angle identity, it says take the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle, which is also cosine a, minus sine of the first angle, so that would be sine a, times sine of the second angle, which is also sine of a. Now, cosine a times cosine a, we can write as cosine squared of a minus sine of a times sine of a is sine squared of a, and this is the double angle identity for cosine. Now it turns out that we can use the Pythagorean identities to create two alternate forms for this double angle identity. So let's explore that. In each case, we will start with the double angle identity for cosine that we just derived, and we will use a Pythagorean identity to make a substitution. In this first case, we know that cosine squared of a could be substituted with 1 minus sine squared of a. So we're going to take this expression and substitute it in for the cosine squared. Then cosine of 2a is going to equal 1 minus sine squared of a, substituting in for that cosine squared a, then we have the minus sign, and we have sine squared of a coming down. When we simplify that, we see we have 1 minus 2 sine squareds of a. So this is an alternate form for cosine of 2a. There's one more alternate form. We will start with the double angle for cosine again, and this time we will make a substitution that sine squared of a can be replaced with 1 minus the cosine squared of a. So we will take that expression, substitute it in for the sine squared, and cosine of 2a will become cosine squared of a minus the quantity 1 minus cosine squared of a, which turns into cosine squared of a minus 1 plus cosine squared of a, which becomes 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. And this is the third form for cosine of 2a. We will definitely use all three forms. So we will use that first form that we derived, cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. Sometimes it will make more sense to use this version, the 1 minus 2 sine squared a, and sometimes it makes sense to use this one, which is the 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. We will use a similar strategy 
to derive the double angle for sine in that we will start with the sum identity sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b and we will rewrite sine of 2a as sine of a plus a. So when we take the sine of the first, we know the first angle is a, so we're taking sine a, cosine of the second angle, which is also a, plus cosine of the first angle, cosine a times sine of the second angle sine a. Now remember from your algebra class if you have something that looks like this say xy plus yx we know that these are like terms because y times x is the same as x times y so we would simplify this and call it 2xy. The same thing is going on over here. We have sine a cosine a and then here we have cosine a sine a. That's just like this situation so we can write this as 2 sine a cosine a. So this is going to be the double angle identity for sine. We'll do a similar strategy for tangent of 2a in that we'll start from the sum identity for tangent and apply that to tangent of 2a where we first rewrite it as tangent of a plus a. Using the identity we know we have to take tangent of the first so tangent a plus tangent of the second which is also tangent a and we're going to divide that by 1 minus tangent of the first tangent a times tangent of the second tangent a. Now looking at the numerator tangent a plus tangent a is 2 tangent of a in the denominator we have 1 minus tangent a times tangent a will become tangent squared of a so this will be the double angle identity for tangent So for convenience, let's get all the double angle identities gathered up in this summary box. We learned that cosine of 2a is equal to cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. Then we made those substitutions. We replaced cosine squared of a with 1 minus sine squared of a and then it turned into 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. For the third one we replace the sine squared of a with 1 minus cosine squared of a and it turned into 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. The double angle for sine turned out that sine of 2a is equal to 2 sine of a cosine of a 
and the tangent of 2a worked out to be 2 times the tangent of a divided by 1 minus the tangent squared of a. So there are three versions of the double angle for cosine, but they all come out of this version and then doing a Pythagorean substitution. There's one version each for sine of 2a and tangent of 2a. And again, I will recommend that to help yourself memorize these, you write them all down two or three times a day, and you also write them down every time you go to use them in a homework problem. My students have told me that that really helps them get them down. Now an important thing to notice here is that in all of these identities we could not factor the two out. So you cannot write that cosine of 2a is equal to 2 cosine of a. That will never be true. Cosine of 2a, you have to use one of these identities. Sine of 2a, you have to use this identity. Tangent of 2a, you have to use that identity. You can never factor the 2 out. It does not work.